Hello and welcome to the Thursday, February 9th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, I wrote up a pretty sort of simple uh, fish uh, today that I received. It arrived as an email that sort of had actually a little bit a threat of emails going forth and back here regarding an order and detachment that claimed to be a payment confirmation. The attachment was just an HTML file, so nothing malicious in the sense that there was no exploit or so involved. But if you open the HTML file, it will mimic an Office 365-like page and, of course, trick you to log in. The way the password is then collected is by sending a request via JavaScript to the Telegram API. Another sort of interesting twist here is on Monday, I wrote about APIs that are being used to look up your public IP address, it actually uses uh, one of those APIs and also then includes uh, the IP address of the host or of the victim. If Telegram is not used in your environment, then of course, uh, looking for Telegram API requests may be something uh, worthwhile uh, to search for. And I already mentioned that uh, these IP lookup APIs are certainly something uh, to uh, keep an eye on. And in case uh, your organization got affected uh, by the recent VMware ESXi, a ransomware ESXi ARCs, CISA, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, uh, came up uh, with uh, some guidance as to how uh, to recover uh, from this compromise. Of course, there is sort of no uh, fail-proof recovery here, but uh, CISA came up with a little bash script that will assist you trying to recover uh, what there is to recover by essentially creating a new VMA uh, configuration files if possible and trying uh, to recover the machines. It'll also create backups of the encrypted uh, files. Overall, it looks uh, pretty straightforward. Nice that it's just a bash file, so relatively easy to review uh, what it does. Uh, Kind of sad that it's almost easier to come up with a recovery script uh, like that than uh, with a good way to actually patch uh, these kind of hypervisors. And NIST has announced that uh, they now found a new encryption standard for hardware-constrained environments. The specific uh, issue they tried to address here is that the standard encryption algorithms we currently use are not really working all that well for IoT environments. So uh, they tried to come up with an algorithm that's uh, still pretty good, but does perform better on uh, these uh, IoT devices. They now uh, finalized uh, their selection and picked the ASCON uh, algorithm, in particular uh, the ASCON 128, and uh, better, there are also hashing algorithms that uh, go with this. In particular, they were looking for an algorithm that cannot just do encryption, but also hashing, also specifically designed for short messages of just a few bytes, which of course, some of the existing algorithms don't always do that efficiently. They also specifically wanted it to support AID or uh, the authenticated encryption with associated uh, data. So this should help uh, IoT software designers uh, to come up with a solid encryption algorithm that performs well in these uh, small hardware envelopes. And Sonic Wall released an advisory that their content filter does not quite work right if you're using Windows 11 22H2. Affected is their capture client and it will not block categories. So if you're blocking certain domains, URL categories, uh, that will not work on this version of Windows. They're working on a new version of Capture Client, which is expected to be released on February 17th. 
And in other patches, we got an update for Google Chrome. Nothing really too extraordinary here. Now, I always point out how Google Chrome pretty much updates itself. Just make sure to actually exit the browser ever so often. But with this release, Google Chrome 110, Google actually is trying something a little bit new here. Instead of just having a stable release, which was February 7th for Google Chrome 110, we now also have an early stable, in this case, February 1st, so about a week earlier. What this means is that a small number of users, and they're not saying how many users this will be, will actually get the update a week earlier early and the idea here is to basically find uh, some sort of show stopping issues as uh, they're saying here not a lot of details and I'll link to the announcement of this policy from last December uh, when it was first made public but like I said this was the first version of Google Chrome where they actually implemented this change well and that's it for today so thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow bye